Hello and welcome. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and welcome to my weekly YouTube live photo editing live stream, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, I'm all in orange today because this is Truth and Reconciliation Week and tomorrow is Truth and Reconciliation Day, which is now an official holiday in Canada. So I thought I would do something a little bit different this week and do a project that is related to some images that I've taken um, of some Indigenous events that I did. And I want to put together some things to show you how to build a project. So whether you have some images already that you would like to put together into a book or make something with some text overlay to hang up on your wall or even a greeting card or something like that, um, or for something that you want to go out and take some pictures and then build something like that. So I'm going to show you a few steps behind my thought process when I'm photographing and also how to select the images and put it all together, even if you don't have Photoshop. So, um, without further ado, let me get into Lightroom and uh, get started. I know there's a lot of regulars here, so I'm happy to see you all, and uh, I will be right back in Lightroom. Okay, I got Catherine. Ron is always here from Australia. Welcome. We got the regulars, Nigel, Holly. Hi, everyone. Deb's here again from Alaska. Welcome, Catherine, as well. Good to see you all. So I've got a few things um, selected here. And uh, as I said, you can see I'm all in orange today. So I am working on some images that I've got in Lightroom. Let me just get this open here. So a few things I want to kind of walk through. First, I want to ask you all a question. Um, have you ever done a photo project of this nature where you had some kind of outcome in mind, whether it be a photo book or a print that you want to put on a wall, maybe with a poem or something overlaid. Have you ever done anything like that before? I'd love to hear from you that are here. And how did you put it together? Because I'm going to show you how to do it, something like this in Photoshop. Um, and you can also do something similar if you're using Luminar. Um, Holly said she's put together slideshows. Okay, awesome. And you can do slideshows right inside of Lightroom. So that's actually a good point, Holly. Thanks for that. I can show you even how to do that today if you are a Lightroom user. Um, but if you don't have Photoshop and you want to put some overlays with text and things over top of your images, there are other ways to do that. Um, currently, Luminar does not have a text tool. That's something that I would like to see them add for sure. But you can use things um, like... Um, Canva, which I can show you, or PicMonkey that are actually free online tools as well that you can use to do layout. And sometimes I'll even use them just to get inspiration, okay? If you have an Adobe membership, you can also use something called Adobe Spark. Okay, let me just hop over here um, because if you pay uh, monthly, now I gotta remember how to get to it, <laughs> Adobe Spark, I, I know there's a link to it, there we go. Right. And it's an online little sort of editing tool that allows you to make designs and posters and things like that. So if you currently have an Adobe membership, right, I can log in with my Adobe ID, right, then you can use this. Oh, it's going to send me a wonderful, <laughs> it's going to send me a wonderful text, uh, text. There we go. Yes, of course. So I have to verify my Adobe uh, membership because it's going to send me a text. So I will do that shortly. But if you um, are using Adobe, you can use this little thing called Spark. All right. Stephanie's done some photo books. Awesome. I'd love to know which brand you're using, Stephanie. Um, I've done Blurb in the past, and that's the one that I rec uh, recommend as well. Okay. And of course, I am not getting my, oh, it's sending it by email. So now I have to collect my email. So I will do that over here in the background so you don't get to see all my messy emails. Okay. Let's see how many I have in my inbox. Uh, let's do four. 
And of course my password. So this is Adobe Spark. If you have Adobe, you can use this for design. So let me just let that open. Um, I'll open Canva as well. Um, if you could put a link to Canva for them, Rob, in the chat. And if you just search for um, Adobe Spark, and I think you can get to it from the little Adobe, um, where is it, thingamajig at the top here. There it is. I think you can get to it from your little Adobe thing here as well. So you can search for it inside the Adobe um, thing if you have that. Or not. There it is. Yeah, so Adobe, Adobe Spark. Okay, so that's what that's called. And the other one is Canva. Okay, now I just have the free version of Canva. Um, you can also sign up and do a paid version which is uh, allows you to use some of their design elements. I honestly just use Canva and I know that um, Rob uses it quite a bit. So maybe he can answer some questions about that. Um, we've previously used it to make some of our, our featured images for our website. And I use it to do things like make a collage because it's really quick and easy. And I can show you how to do that um, with Canva as well. Okay. Okay, so I can make a collage out of multiple images like that really quickly, and it just forms it for me, okay? So those are a couple of different ways, like I said, to do some designs. I'm going to go back into Lightroom here, and Lightroom itself has a print module as well. So I could even design it partly in here. It's a little bit limited in terms of putting things together and adding text, um, but I could do it if I wanted something really, really simple. Okay. Yes, it's Canva without the S. So C-A-N-V-A, so not canvas. So like canvas, but without the S. Yes. So there is the website of the one that I just showed. Um, another one, um, maybe somebody could confirm if PicMonkey also offers the same. Uh, it's a very similar one. It's PicMonkey. Maybe Rob can find that one for you as well. Uh, I love to give you um, resources for things like this that don't cost any money. If you don't want to use Photoshop, um, there's PicMonkey, right? All right, so let me get back into Lightroom. So I wanna talk about my process in terms of what I'm making or what I want to make and why, and then how I've chosen or, or even photographed the images that I have. So what I started with was my cousin is a, a psychologist and she's got some indigenous clients and she wants to um, put a display up with some things that she's been gifted. One of them being a drum um, with a you know leather drum that they use in their culture. And she wants to, me to make uh, an image to go sort of as a centerpiece. So we've been talking about this for a while and I haven't, haven't got it finished. So I'm inspired this week to get on it. So what I did was I have photographed many different events over the last oh, year and a half or so. Um, and I'll put a link to my Smug Mug Gallery if you want to see some of my images, because you can see a lot of these on my on my website. Actually, if you could find that, please, Rob, just link to the gallery in the chat. Um, you can go and see some of the events that I've done and what I have here is a collection. So if you've never done a collection inside of Lightroom, um, because these are all from different events, okay? So these first few were from a powwow, um, then this was from a different event. Let me just sort these. Yeah, so these are all sorted by time. Okay, so these were at an, another event, these ones here, and then these were at another event. So this is probably a combination of about six or seven different photo shoots, right? But I'm able to put them all together in what's called a collection in Lightroom. Okay, so if you're not familiar with collections, what you can do is go down to the left-hand side here, okay? And it's one of the little tabs that you can open called collections, okay? You can make your own, and you can also have some that are automatic, such as Lightroom makes one for you that has all your five star images. So everything that is your best image that you mark as five stars all ends up in this gallery. It's called a smart collection for you. So these are all some things that I've photographed recently. Let me make my thumbnails a little bigger. 
right? And these are sort of the best of the best, right? You may recognize this photo shoot. I wrote about this one on the website. Um, this was a themed project that we did for these ladies where we scouted the location and did some really fun, colorful images for these group of ladies, right? So these are all my five stars or very best images, okay? To make your own collection, you know, all you just have to go to the plus sign up here. Let me just turn on my uh, little cursor highlighter for you so you can see more of my mouses. Okay, so over here where it says collections, you just go plus. And if you're using Luminar, that would be, I believe it's called an album. I don't have Luminar open right now, but I believe it's called an album. <clears throat> Similarly, if you're using other kinds of software, um, Apple Photos, all of those things usually have anything that's a database type of program like Lightroom and Luminar, you can make what's called a collection or an album. Okay. So it's, it's literally a virtual set of your images. Okay. So it's not duplicating, lost my mouse. It's not duplicating your images into another folder. It's just sort of saying, I want to group these together in a virtual collection. Okay. So all I'm doing is putting them into a collection here. So for example, uh, I have a collection of images for all the articles that I write. Okay. So every time I write a new article, I put a new collection in here. So let's see. Um, I'll just think of one. Okay. What am I going to write next week? I'm going to write a new article on exposure compensation, for example. So I'm going to create a calorie. So let me just cancel out of this. I just click the plus, right? Create collection. And then I'm just going to call it exposure compensation. And then you get to choose where to put it like in a set. So a set is literally just sort of the upper level folder. It's a folder that can have more than one collection, right? And I'm going to put it into that article folder. Where are we here? I'm just going to put it right here for now. Articles, where are we? Articles, articles. Okay, somebody help me, I'm blind here. Where are we, articles? There we go, right there. All right, so I'm just gonna put it right there. And you can see there's my new collection. There's no images in it, okay? And how you put images in it is you can either set it as a target collection or you can just drag them in, okay? Now you can see, I just dragged that one in and there it is, okay? So I created a collection Oops. Well, I created a collection. I need to get back to my other collection. Where the heck are we? <laughs> I lost my place. There we go. So I collected collect I created one called project that I'm demonstrating today, right? And then I just added all of these into it. Oh, I feel a sneeze coming on now. Okay. All right. So once I've created my collection, now I, I what I was looking for, I went through all of the um, events that I photographed, including a powwow. Um, we had an event on Canada Day powwow and some of the other marches and things. Um, I put them all in here. And what I was looking for was a combination of things like this that were images of people that might make a nice um, image where I could put text over it. So this one in particular, so see how there's this large area of grass open. Okay, so this might make a nice print where I could put just a small amount of text. Okay, so I was looking for images like that. Likewise with this one, same with this one, okay? And the one thing I like about this one is that he's kind of looking to the left and I could put the text there like he's looking at it. So I might put a quote or a poem or something that was very kind of introspective or thoughtful because that's the would match his expression. OK, um, so that's what I was looking for, as well as images like this one and some of the other close-ups so for example the ribbon skirt um anything like this where i just took a close-up when i was photographing because when i'm at the events i love to get shots of details like this partly because i know that later 
I have the ability of going to find these detailed pictures that might make, you know, a nice background image on a collage or an overlay or something like that. So I take these kinds of pictures when I'm doing the actual event, right? So I've selected a number of different things. So how, what I'm going to do next is, is rearrange them, right? And that's the cool thing about collections is you can, you can just drag them around. So I'm just going to move all of these things that are like little close-ups of stuff and put them at the top. So I'm just holding command and clicking on the images that are sort of details and then I'll show you all my details pictures, right? And then I can drag them all up to the top at the same time, like so, okay? So now they're all organized and then I can organize them into say, uh, close-up pictures. Oh, I missed a couple of details, get those up there. And then I can organize them into sort of um, single people, groups, however I want to, or um, arrange them. Okay, so I've got multiple people and dancers and so on. These ones here, uh, oops, I missed some more details. I'm going to keep moving that up. Like so. Okay. And I wanted to just show you... Um, actually these images before I, I delete them because I wasn't going to use these two of these ladies. And when I took these photos, um, I noticed that they were standing at this event holding hands and they had the really beautiful orange skirts on. And I wanted to focus in just on the skirts. So I did one photo of them full length to show all of them. Then I did one closer one. And then I finally did just their skirts. So for, for me, this is a really strong image that I could use along with something because it has a strong message. Okay. So when you're photographing, try to think about um, exactly that. So if I show them sort of in sequence here, um, it would be what I would call sort of your long shot or wide, medium, and tight, okay? So shoot variations of the same thing so that later you have some options, okay? Especially if you know this is something that you're going to make into a project, okay? So if you're doing a park, for example, if you want to photograph dogs at the dog park, okay? Maybe you have your own dog that you take to the dog park. Make sure that you get, you know, a picture of the overall scenery and then also maybe close-ups of a flower or a park bench detail or a sign detail or something like that that you could use as these these intermediate and detailed pictures okay especially if you're doing a book this makes a great sort of progression if you're doing a book right so for this particular project i'm actually just going to delete these ones from the collection and i literally just select them and click delete so i've not deleted them from my entire hard drive or from lightroom just from this collection okay so just i'm just saying i'm not using them for this particular project okay so I'll just run through all of these um, close-ups. And what I'm looking for is I'm just trying to see what grabs me, okay? What am I inspired by, right? I love the pattern of the feathers of the headdress here, right? This one might make an interesting one, um, blurring out this background a little bit more. So that one has potential for something. Again, another headdress, okay? So this one is horizontal versus the other one, which was vertical orientation, this one I've actually used for a poster and it has been used in the past for a, a ribbon skirt walk. Okay. Uh, I used this one for something in the past as well. I could put some words down on the bottom here and make her, her dress a little more out of focus. Okay. Um, for those of you not familiar, this is also the indigenous medicine wheel, which is very important in um, medicine, um, indigenous culture. It's the four directions as well as um, for healing modalities. Um, there's a whole number of things around the medicine wheel learning, okay? So it's a very important um, sign or symbol, okay? This is the back of her dress, which I thought was beautiful as well. So I was looking for those details, right? 
This one was actually a double exposure that I did in the camera and I was just kind of playing around. So that's our city hall uh, pyramid and tower in the background with a close up of somebody's uh, ribbon skirt. Okay? So the ribbon skirt is another symbol of um, indigenous culture, of women especially, okay? and um, just strength. It's a symbol of strength and um, survival, shall we say. Okay, So back of a man's shirt again the ribbon shirts go along okay now this one really attracted me because of the negative space okay so there's lots of space to put words and when when i'm talking about negative space this is what i mean so there's a big open area where there isn't anything else going on and i also thought that i could add overlays of other images on top of this and still get the idea of the drum so this one this one here really sort of excited me okay uh, so that one I'm probably going to use. Okay, ribbon skirts, dresses, another headdress. Okay, this one I like as well, um, and I think it's better than the other two because if I look at them side by side, the lighting is better than the one on the right. It's not as sort of um, highlighting the feathers here unless I wanted that. Okay, so again, it's just different. So if I'm looking for a headdress, actually I might even just put those all together. Let's do that. Okay, so now I'm really, really getting specific about grouping um, dresses together, things like that. Okay, so I've got bits of clothing and so on, right? This is another type of dress, okay, the jingle dress. And I thought this might be interesting because... There's kind of enough space in the middle here that I might be able to put some text or I could put like a white overlay and put some text on the middle there. Okay, so that is um, something from powwow regalia that the ladies wear when they're dancing. Okay? Then I've got three different drums and finally the candles. Okay, so there's another drum, the back of the drum and the candles, which were at a vigil that I attended. Okay. Then I've got the various different shots of the people, right? A um, couple of photos I just wanted to show that I've done recently. This was a family photo that I did and she made all of their outfits or most of their outfits for this family event. So we've got um, four generations there. It was a really beautiful family and they even got into the stream. Right. So this is kind of off topic, but it was a project that we planned together. And um, for their family photos, she wants to hang on the wall. And I scouted the location because she told me she wanted something that was natural with rocks and water. OK, so did I did I deliver on that one? OK, so I'm really um, involved in. Uh, the creative process when I'm doing photos, even if it's for something like a family photo and planning it with the model or client, if they're a paying client so that they get the images that they're looking for. And it helps me to be more creative as well. Right. So we're both involved in the process. Another group of indigenous women that I photographed in Edmonton, and this is a place called indigenous art park. So they're actually standing in front of a sculpture made by a local artist that represents um, the stream and water and doing a, what's called a Buffalo yell here. And then this one, they're standing in a piece of art that is Cree syllabics that means fire. So we had a lot of fun photographing these ladies. And um, they they said, I said, ladies, you're on fire. And they said, uh, well, somebody else said, no, we're in the fire. And then uh, the lady in purple who is is an elder and her is Cookum Kathy. She's awesome. She says, we are the fire, which I love that. So I love the connectedness amongst them where they're all touching and holding hands. Again, we, I scouted this location and I knew that we, we planned the clothes and the colors that they were going to wear. So it was all planned down to the minutest detail. So I guess what, what really the message that we're talking about today is planning. Okay. It's planning, planning, planning. Okay. The better you could plan your photography, even if it's just something for yourself, the better the final results are going to come out as, right? Uh, it looks like Rob and Ron are having a side chat here about where everybody got married. Um, 
Oh, Ron, 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 Ron. You're, you're now Rob's new best friend. <laughs> Got married in a pub, pub next to a river. Uh, let me scroll back here because I see a few questions. So let me um, find the questions. Okay, so we're also talking about cigars, apparently. <laughs> okay. Uh, Catherine creates calendars and Canva for social media. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Rob uses it for making our YouTube um, thumbnails and so on, for doing things for Pinterest. Okay. I found the same, Catherine. I don't pay for the, the upgraded version because I don't use their graphics, right? But if you need to have um, their images, then it's not, it's not that expensive, right? Uh, so then we're just going to ignore the side talk about cigars. I'm glad you guys are enjoying all of this. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. Now I suppose you're going to want me to pull up some of our, our wedding photos because yes, we were married in a waterfall or next to a waterfall in the middle of the river, uh, by an indigenous shaman. Okay. Trish wants to know, did I use a zoom lens for my detail shot or zoom in, um, with what I was using? Um, so that's kind of the same question. I can go and take a look at my images, Trish, because it will tell me what I photographed it with, right? Okay, so let's come back up here. So this one was um 18.5 millimeters. So this is a wide lens. I just got really, really close to this one, right? Yeah, there we go. So 18.5 mil. Uh, same. Okay. So this is a 70 mil on that same zoom lens. So it's a zoom lens on my Fuji 18 to 35. That's the one that's on my camera the most, right? So this is all with that same lens at various different focal lengths. This one's at 55, 30. When I'm shooting with that lens really wide, it just means that I'm super close to that thing, right? So don't forget that there's there's something else that you can zoom with, um, and that's your feet, right? So I could show you my feet, but I've got funky socks on today. So um, this one is a longer lens because it was a little bit farther away. Same with this. Okay, so various different focal lengths. They're not all the same. This one was a wider lens, and I'm literally probably two feet behind the girls, right? Like they knew I was taking their photo and they just st stood really still, right? This one is a longer lens. So I was farther away. Um, and I got the lady to hold her skirt out straight. So it wasn't making, making waves, right? So good question. Thanks, Trish. Um, I will mention this one. Okay. So this one, you can see was a wide lens and I got fairly close, but because I'm super close to the candle, I wanted to throw um, the background out of focus into this bokeh, okay? So you get these blobs of light and I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says 215. So the, the vigil that uh, I was attending was when they found the um, 215 children at the residential school in Kamloops. And the so there was candles placed in that arrangement. And I was trying to capture the bokeh in the background that said 215, right? So you can kind of see it um, by getting super close to that, that candle, like I'm probably at the limit of how close I can focus on that lens. And the background is fairly far away. So that's how I got that bokeh, right? <laughs> no worries, Ron. Getting off track is, is uh, Rob's favorite thing. All right. So you and him can talk about cigars or Trish. Uh, uh, don't even get him started on rum, right? If you start talking about rum. Okay, so those are my detail shots, right? And now I'm just kind of thinking through my head about, okay, how do I want to start? I've also done some research on, I pulled a few quotes from uh, Chief Dan George. I thought, okay, what can I um, use? Now, this is one that's fairly famous. It's called When My Heart Soars or In My Heart Soars. So I might use that one. Um, I've also looked up some quotes from Sitting Bull another famous chief. Okay. So I'm kind of just looking through, uh, and for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use one from, from chief Dan, but I may change that depending on how I, I determine the final look of the, of the image. Right. So again, there's a couple of ways that I can build this. 
and I'm going to start by building it in Lightroom itself. Okay, so I'm going to start with the image of the drum that I mentioned earlier because I think it's a nice base. And because my cousin has a drum up on her wall already, um, it will go nicely with that. Okay. Right, so when I go to the print module in Lightroom, now if you're using Lightroom and you don't see this, right, you may just have it turned off, okay? So you can go to it from here, okay? Because I have some things like I have, um, you can turn off the map and really customize how this shows at the top. Okay? Because I don't use cloud and I don't use web and I don't use map, I could literally just have them not show, okay? And I believe I can customize that. I rarely do this, right? So um, there we go. Let's see. Yeah, I really <laughs> I can't even find a layout style. I'd have to do some research on that because I uh, I never do that. So for myself. So if you want to know how to do that, I will uh, I will dig around and figure out how to do that for you. Okay, so once I get into this print module, okay, there's some that are already made. I'm just gonna close the collection by Lightroom okay, as templates. Okay, so and if you mouse over them, watch my little um, thing in the upper left corner, right up here. As I mouse over them, you can see the layouts. Okay, some of them are what's called a contact sheet. Okay, so if I do. Um, Let's just say, let's say, say I do a contact sheet here. Where is it? Okay, so if I do a contact sheet, it's set up with, if I choose all of the images in the film strip, for example, this is sort of what I get, right? Uh, contact sheet means that any of the images that are selected, it shows all of them on the screen, right? If you're doing a custom layout, you have to drag the images into it, right? So for example, like that, right? But it just gives you a starting point. So what I'm looking for is something that has a big image in the background, right? So something like that might work, oops. Okay, and then you see my size of my thing is different. Something like that might work. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I've got custom dimensions here. So let's fix that. So it's making a weird size. So let's do a different one. Okay, there we go. All right. So now let's say I'm going to put my drum in here, right? And once you get it in there, you can move it around inside the guide and then I could put some other images down here okay so I'm just grabbing a couple real quick these are not necessarily what I would make okay and you can make a layout something like that okay you can also add text okay but again it's limited in Lightroom so I can add a background color if I want I can add what's called an identity plate where I can just add some text and type in what I want. So let's just say I copy this. I'm just gonna chop and copy one of these short quotes here. So I just did a quick copy and let's make sure it's black. So, okay, so it's very small, <laughs> obviously. Let's make it bigger. So then I can move the text around and position it sort of how I want here. Okay, so that's a simple way to put some text on. Okay, obviously I can do bigger text, that would be helpful. I wish Lightroom gave me a preview of the text ahead of time, it doesn't, okay. So that's a really quick way to make a collage in Lightroom, okay? David is telling me right click on the menu bar. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> so to get these modules to show, so if I don't want the map, 
or I don't want the web, I can just delete them. Apparently I can't delete cloud, but there you go. Thanks, David. You win the prize. Um, okay. So Rob says, which is more important, the text or the photo? That's again for you to decide. Okay. So this is a pretty simplistic layout and you're limited in what you can do with Lightroom in terms of text. You only have this one thing. It's got limited uh, fonts and how you can actually size it, right? Because if I click on it, you'll notice that I can't sort of make it si smaller in one direction. It sizes the whole thing, right? Because I want to make it narrower to fit in this spot, but then it makes the font smaller. So it's kind of, you know, defeating the purpose here. All right, let's just make it black. There we go. So not the greatest, and um, I probably could do better. So let's just make another one and start over again. Because right? I've got some custom ones that I've made as well. So let's just clear all these off. And I'm going to turn this off. And let's just say I want to invert this one. So I'm going to do an eight by 10, right? So I can type in the sizes, right? And set up my size resolution. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start by dragging the image on and then I can resize it. So let's just do something different. Let's just say I want this image to fill almost the whole page, right? So I can resize it, right? It doesn't have a great, um, it doesn't have a great way of, of centering. Like I can't just have it pop to, to the page kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's not the best. Let's just turn that off. There we go. Okay, so about like that. So I'm trying to center it and just leave a little bit of a border, okay? Then I could add other images on top, okay? So if I want to add um, one of these, these beautiful warriors, oops. See, that's what happens. If I just add it, he pops them or replaces it. So I'm just gonna choose a size. Now it's added here, it's added the size on the next page. I'm gonna rotate it. There we go. And then I'm just going to pop him in there. Now, once I've got him added, lock the aspect ratio. I can resize him and then I can put him over here. Okay. Get rid of that page. Okay. So now I've got something that looks like this. And this is kind of looking interesting. And I'm literally just playing, right? So I can duplicate this. Uh, no, I can't. Let's do another one. So you could see that Lightroom is a little bit on the clunky side for doing layouts like this. If I was doing a major project, I would take this into Photoshop, right? Because building this is gonna take me forever. But I kind of like where this is going, right? So I could put a series of um, individual portraits like this. If I go back to my screen here, so I've got some some nice portraits of uh, this girl and some of these dancers. I love the light on him here. Right, the color is amazing. Right, the older bookums. So I would put some verticals down the bottom. Right, go back to my print module. So this is kind of nice. And then I still have room to put text up in here, okay? But once again, it's limited, okay? So if I turn on this quote again, now we've got a better place to put it, but it's still sort of limited, right? If I was doing this in Photoshop, which I could do as well, I would put a white box maybe behind this, right? So, 
another option is we could pick the images we want and export them, right? And take them over to Photoshop. So I see that that's actually a question. All right, so let's just see where everybody is thinking about here. It does depend on your audience and the purpose, right? So like Rob asked, is it more important for the text or the image? So yes, it depends if I'm using the image just as a background because I might actually even blur the image then if that's the case, right? Yeah, and Rob mentioned reducing the opacity, okay? Or I could put an overlay on top like I would do in Photoshop. Um, Ron has a great idea. Yes, you can actually use photo uh, PowerPoint. So if you have Microsoft office you can actually use powerpoint to make a print layout the only thing i would caution you on doing that is make sure that when you set it up that you have your resolution set high enough to actually print okay if you just want it for like a screen background on your computer or something like that it's fine using the regular resolution but just check your um make sure that your resolution is high enough for print right Yes. Okay. So who would like to see Photoshop demonstrated? Okay. Please. Um, we have a question here. Actually, let me get rid of this here. I have a question for everybody. Are you a reader? Those of you that are here, are you a reader of our website? Or have you joined us from uh, YouTube and found us that way? We'd love to know how you found out about this live that you've joined in today. I know many of you are um, subscribers to my emails and so on. And maybe, Rob, you could just put a link to um, our About page, which has a subscription form. If you want to get on our email list, then you'll also get notices of all of our articles that come out on the website as well. All right, so let's go to some more advanced things here. I'm going to export a few of these images and just pull them into uh, Canva. So I'm just going to pick a few that I know are powerful. Okay, so and the ones that I like are are kind of simple that that have some great symbolism, but uh, and color without having too much busyness. Okay, so I'm going to choose uh, this one here of the headdress. I'm going to choose the drum, the medicine wheel, and let's see. I like the idea of the candle, but it doesn't have as much meaning unless it goes with something else. Uh, let's see the girls with their dresses. And then I'm going to pick a few of these portraits. So I like the idea of this one here as well because I could put words on there. Um, and some of these vertical portraits that we had. Okay, so let's pick one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just going to export these really quickly, and I'm going to export them at a low resolution just for um, just for ease of working with here so it opens in and I can work with them quicker, okay? I can also open these as... Um, as a layered file in Photoshop, and I'll show you that as well, but it's going to take a lot more of my resources on my computer to do that. So I'm just going to save them in a folder, and then I can export. So I have export presets, and that's what I'm using here. Okay, so when I hit export, these are my presets that come up. Okay, and I chose one that's set up for sizing for Facebook. Um, actually, if you want to, please share the link to that, Rob. There's um, how to size images for sharing online. That's a great article as well that's helpful for people to size their images, whether you're using Lightroom or Luminar. Okay. Okay. So it's exporting the 11 files. And as soon as that's done, it's going to pop up. Okay. If I want to open those same files... Okay, so there's my selection again. If I want to open those same files in Lightroom and play around with them as layers, okay, I could do that by right-clicking. So I've got them all selected. And actually, let me just choose three, for example. Let's choose the drum, the medicine wheel. And I like the direction I was going with some of these vertical portraits. So let's just choose, um, this is a powerful portrait. How many is that? One, two, three, four. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to right click and, oops, right click <laughs> one more time. 
All right, we'll right click, edit in, and I'm gonna choose open as layers in Photoshop. So it's the very bottom one, right? And while that's happening, okay, my export has finished. Okay, so you can see there's the images that I just exported. And I'm gonna drop those into Canva and play with those as well, okay? I see Catherine has a question. Ah, how to size your images small in Lightroom. Yeah, you just want to change your export settings. Um, check out that article, Catherine, because that will give you a really good idea on how to do that and how um, especially saving for Photoshop or for Facebook because they use um, 2048 pixels is the optimal. Uh, I'm not Ecom because Luminar doesn't have a lot of layout options or I can't do these kinds of things. So if you are using Luminar, what I would suggest is you can still do the collection, the things that I was doing um, where I made the collection and make an album of your images that you want to use in a project. And then once you've got them created in your project, you would have to export them from Luminar to put them into uh, Canva or PicMonkey or something else where you can add text and do layouts. Okay because it's not a design program. The benefit of Photoshop is that it actually was designed for designers or made for designers, not photographers, okay? So yes, I'm gonna open them in Photoshop. So it's actually opening them all right now um, and you can see how long it's taking. So it's literally opening each raw file and opening them as layers. Okay, you know, I think I've, I've got them all opened. Nope, still opening them. So what it's doing is it's stacking them all on top of each other and it's gonna be a really big file. So that's why I said I didn't really want to open those all inside of Photoshop because um, I'm gonna end up with a really big file, but I wanted to show you how to do it, okay? All right, so I think they're all open. Yes, they are. All right, so what's happened now is I've got all these layers. Can you see this here? So I'm in Photoshop and I've got all of these layers now, okay? And each of them, make my screen bigger. Thank you. Okay. So I've got all of these layers now and I'm just see if I can zoom in. Okay. So you can see each of these is from the raw files that I open. Okay. And what I would do is put this one. Let's see if I can work with this, put the drum on the bottom and then I'm going to turn off all the rest. Okay. So now I've got the drum kind of in the arrangement that we started with in Lightroom, which is great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn on each of these layers and move them around and resize them, okay? So inside Photoshop, there is something called transform. It's under the edit menu. So edit, transform, and I'm gonna do free transform. Why won't, oh, free transform is what I want, sorry. So free transform and the keyboard shortcut is Command or Control T, right? So when you hit that, you get these little, um, <clears throat> these little kind of handlebars on the corner of your image. Now it's just this layer, okay? So I can resize it. And if I don't touch anything else, it keeps the aspect ratio, okay? So I don't want to squish it or make it like a weird shape. So I'm gonna resize this one and do what I was starting to do over there in the Lightroom. Let's put that there, right? Now it's created this little um, space here and I can move that down a bit if I want using the move tool. I can also show the rulers and that is command or control R, right? So now I've got these rulers and when you have the ruler active, you can also just sort of click on the ruler and drag down and you'll get this little sort of, it's called like a guide, a guideline, okay? So as I resize these images, I want them all to line up. So I put that little guideline there, okay? Now I'm gonna do the next one and I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut. And I also want to size them the same size, okay? Now I'm gonna size it down till it gets that guideline, like so. And I'm also going to make sure you'll see that when I hit the same size, it's going to show up as a pink line. It'll match up on the bottom. Okay, right? see that? I can even put another guideline. So I can grab another guideline and make sure that I'm matching that up to both. Okay, right? like so. And do the next one. 
Now, I'm much quicker at this than you might be because I've used Photoshop for years and years and years and years. Okay, so I'm pretty quick with my keyboard shortcuts. And I already know a change that I'm going to make here, okay, because this guy, and here's a little shortcut. If I want to get to this layer, because I know he's on a different layer, hold command and then just click on that layer. Okay, now watch, watch over here on my layers. Okay, if I click on the drum, I'm holding command control, it changes to that layer. Okay, so now I can move him because I want to put him over here. Right, and I'll show you why in a second. And I want to put him in the middle, right, or possibly over on the other side. Let's put the ladies in the middle. Okay, because he's facing center, and I might even want to add another image here because I think I've got room for one more, but I've run out of I run out of images. I'd go grab another one, right? I put another image possibly in the middle, and let's go edge to edge. Okay, so the people that are facing in, I want them facing the middle, not out of the picture. Okay, so I wouldn't want to put him over here. Okay, you want him facing into the frame or into the project. Okay, so see how when I'm doing this, it sort of pops into these little matching up yeah, uh, pink lines. Okay, so I know that it's matching like so. You can also select all three of these layers and do an alignment so I can make sure that they match at the top. Okay, so you see that I wasn't quite perfect. And if I match at the bottom, so it's telling me I'm using these little alignment tools up here. My move tool is activated. That's this guy here. Okay? And it's telling me that they're not quite the same size. So I would probably go and resize them and just zoom in a little closer right? Because they're not quite perfect. See that? Let's line those up at the top. So if I line them up at the top, now they're not aligned at the bottom. Okay, so I'll just do a quick realign. So it looked visually lined up to me before, but it was not. There we go. Perfect. Right, so I would go and find one more image and probably just move him over a little bit more, like so, right, and maybe even crop this one. Then I get to decide, okay, what else do I want to do with this image, right? Do I want to um, put this one somewhere? Uh, it's very colorful, so I'm going to put this one in the top corner up here, right? And I'm going to have it sort of floating like that. And let's see about this fellow. Let's do him as well. Oops. Let's do him as well. I like the idea of both of these over here. Okay, so if I want them the same size, I can literally just sort of put it lined up so I can make sure they match. And he's right underneath. Okay. Like so. I might make them a little smaller. Um, and if I want to do that, I can actually select both layers and then resize the whole thing together. See how that resized them both, okay? And then if I want to separate them just a little bit, like so, okay? So the things that you add um, if you're doing a design like this in Photoshop that make the difference are things like um, a drop shadow, okay? So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on here so that you can see these images. So they're floating over top of the drum layer, right? But let's say I want them to stand out a little bit more. If you right click, um, you can choose layer style somewhere on here. I never do it this way, to be honest. Um, double click on the actual layer, right? You'll get this layer style, okay? You can also get to it, I believe, up here, right? Layer style. Yeah, I literally never do it this way. I literally never do. So double click and you get this layer style, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna add a drop shadow. So I'm gonna check that off. And you can see that it has added a drop shadow, but then I get to decide um, how dark it is, how, how much it spreads out or fades, right? So size is like the fade, you can see that, and the positioning. You know, I can I can use this little dial here to move it around, right? 
or you can actually, you might not know this, just drag the shadow itself. Okay, so if I want the shadow there, okay, and I don't like what I've done with the size, so that's going to come down, okay, like so, and then I'm just going to fade it out a little bit. I do like an idea of it blending a little bit nicer. Like so. Oh, let's just go back to a normal. Right? There we go. And now, once I've done that, I can actually copy that effect by right-clicking and choosing Copy Layer Style and then apply it to this one. Right? Right-click, Paste Layer Style. So now I have the, the shadow. Now, there's a quicker way to do that. Okay? I can drag it from one layer to the other, but watch what happens. So if I just grab it, and drag it okay now it's down on this image but i've lost it here okay but if i hold the alt option key and drag it it duplicates that effect so i can hold alt and quickly add it to all of them just like that okay so now if i turn my little rulers off you can see that i've got a nice drop shadow on all of them okay if i want to take it farther and add an outline around the image that one is called stroke and i'll show you the trick to this one so i just want to do a black outline around the image okay and i'm going to do a fairly small one so i want it to be thin let's do about five and actually i'll show you the larger one okay so if you do a large wide stroke you have the choice of having the stroke go on the outside of the image, but if you do that, it starts to get these rounded, weird corners, okay? If you do inside, okay, it makes the image smaller, but you get square corners. I generally choose center, right? And I'm not usually making one that large, okay? So I want something, let's try 10. Just want a little black outline to separate it from the rest, okay? And I can, once again, do the same thing, right? Alt, Option key, grab the stroke, and drop it onto the other layers that I want to have a stroke. Okay. Now I might want to do it on the drum as well, okay, but not the drop shadow. Okay, so now the drum has an outline as well. How are we looking? Okay. I would also probably now that I've sort of decided on my design, uh, crop it a little bit from the bottom, right? Like so. There we go. And now I can add my, my text overlay. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to add text. And the first thing I wanna do is add a box though. Remember how I said if I put the text here, right? So I can do that by clicking the text button or just T. And you can just click on the picture and start typing. But I'm just gonna do a copy again. Oh, I did paste it. Okay, so I still had this in my in my clipboard. Okay, so I did a copy and paste. And you can see that what it's done is it's kind of like stretched it out really long. But if I do a transform, I can change the size and it will resize the text. Okay. But it's making a big mess. Okay, can you see that? So I'm just going to cancel this out. And I'll show you the other way to make a text box. Okay, so you've got the text highlighted is draw on your picture, okay? Now it's gonna give you the area that the text is going to fit into. And now when I paste, it fits into that box, okay? Oops. Then I can do things like change the font, I uh, will probably change it to black text and so on. Okay. And I've got that over here on the character and paragraph toolbar. Okay. If you don't see these things, like if you don't see your layers, um, they're different windows. You just have to find them here. Okay. So now I could change it to black. Apparently I'm using web colors. So I've changed it to black and I can change the font. So I'm not crazy about um, all caps. Let's try something a little bit less bold. Let's try that. Okay. That looks better. Um, I can also choose to center it or not.
Okay, so now we've got something pretty decent, but the, you still can't see the words because it's kind of over top of these, these different, the drum in the background, right? So what I wanna do is use the rectangle tool or the shape tool, okay? And I'm gonna use rectangle. I'm going to fill it with white, no stroke, okay? And I'm literally just gonna draw a box around where the text is, okay? And you'll see what happens, okay? I can resize it, okay? So it makes this white box. Let me move that. And I'm just going to put it under the text. So right now your layer order is very important, okay? So if you want the box under the text, you literally just have to move the layer, okay? So now it's underneath the text. Then I can size it to fit a little better now that I can see the text, okay? And I'll show you a trick again. We can center them, right? So I can visually center them or just choose both layers again, okay? And then using the move tool, once the move tool is selected, you can center this way and center this way. Aha! Okay, so the text box is obviously bigger. So let me just do a resize on the text box. There we go. Nope, it's squishing. Because I made the text box too big. That's not gonna work. Okay, the next thing I can do is actually lower the opacity of this layer, okay? And you can do that here on the layer. Or if you have your move tool selected, which is the V keyboard shortcut, just by hitting numbers on the keyboard, it'll change the opacity. So it's another little shortcut. So I hit five and it went to 50, six to 60 and so on, okay? So I can literally just do that, okay? I can also link them together. Okay, so I can, I right clicked and chose link together. Okay, now if I move, they move together. Okay, so when I select one, it's moving them both. Okay. And I might make it a little bigger to fill a bit more of that space and so on. But I think, you know, what I'm creating is something that is, is, is going to work. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to hit save and let's go and play around with uh, something else uh, in Canva, okay? So once I hit save and close, the benefit of doing it the way that I did, which was coming from Lightroom as a, as the open in layers, it's gonna bring it back into Lightroom so I can see how my project is, is starting to take shape, right? All right, is there anything in the chat that I need to know about or are you guys still talking about cigars? Okay, so there's the project, and you can see that it is indeed a PSD file, right? And if I want to open it to continue working on it, I just choose Edit In, this time Open in Photoshop, okay? And I want to make sure that when the this pops up, that I choose Edit the Original, and all the layers will still be there, okay? If you open a new copy of Lightroom Adjustments Applied, you're going to get a flattened lit, a flattened picture and you won't be able to edit and leave start where you left off, right? So let's pop over here because I've got those images that I exported, right? And let's just say okay, let's make a let's make a poster, right? So there's a number of different presets in Canva, right? So you could choose a template um, scrolling through. So I kind of want to see, you know, do I, um, what do I want it to look like? Um, I'm definitely, okay, photo poster. Now we're talking. Okay. So now we're getting closer, right? So take a look at that. So I can just drop images in. Okay. Um, so far that's the closest one. I'm looking for one that has lots of images. Now this one may be converting the images to black and white, but that's okay, you can turn that off, okay? Let's just start with this one, okay? So I'm gonna start with this and then I can just replace the images, right? So I think just double click on it. It's been a while since I used Canva. Uh, I can drop these in. <laughs> See, now I haven't used Canva in a while. 
how do I replace an image, Rob? Help me out here. Duplicate the page. Uh, edit image, I'm guessing. No. Nope. Oh, screen layout. Screen layout. There we go. Well, I'm hoping somebody will show me how to replace this because I haven't used Canva in a while. So I'm not going to be the greatest Canva instructional for you here today because uh, I have not done this myself in a while. So you need to start with a layout or you could start with a blank page and literally just add them like I did. Right. Um, I'm going to start back from home and just create a new blank page. Right. So I'm going to do a create blank poster. There we go. So it works exactly the same, right? You can just upload the images that you want to use. And I have the folder of the ones that I just exported. So I just literally select them and drop them in, right? So you saw the Venice ones down below here. That's how I made that uh, collage, right? Um, so now I've got the images, they're uploading and I can do exactly the same thing, right? I'm going to wait for them to upload. If I want to start with this one this time, right? Just click on it. I can add it. Uh, I can rotate the page and so on. Okay. Right? So all of the same sort of tools, uh, you can add text here and you have the same options. You've even got some sort of fancy text and the headings and the subheadings. You can add elements things like shapes, okay? So the same way that I added the um, text box overlay onto, onto Photoshop, right? You can do the same kind of thing, right? So I can add a box and change the opacity of it, same idea, right? And then put my text in there, right? So it's exactly the same idea, but in a free editor, right? The thing that I love about Spark, right, if I wanted to make a collage, it's actually really easy. So if you do have uh, Photoshop, right, uh, I think I can just drop these in here, but I'm going to choose them. So I'm going to choose that same folder of images again, and it makes the collage for you <coughs> automatically, which is great. Okay, so all the photos get added, and then I just click and I say, okay, what kind do I want? I want poster, what size? So poster or landscape. And it literally forms the collage for me, right? So if you do have an Adobe membership and you have not used Spark, definitely try it out because this is something you can use for making your collages for sharing on social media. Um, and it does a really great job. You can also save them as templates and just change the images, right? Yes, yes, yes. Cookies. Okay. So now you can see, boom, I got a collage and they're all spaced nicely. Beautiful, right? Um, you can swap any of the images out, right? If I want to um, say, okay, I want this one over here instead, I can literally just swap it out like that. All right. So uh, Canva and um, Spark have a really great tools. For you to use if you are um, not so inclined to use Photoshop because it's more complicated. Uh, if you don't have any Adobe, I would definitely give a look to Canva, right? There's a little bit of a learning curve, but there's lots of videos and things available for it. I'm going to pop over back into Lightroom because I want to see how you guys are doing here. And I basically, <laughs> basically got a pretty good start on my project now. So I feel like I'm going in a good direction here and I've got something that I can work with. I'll probably search for a few more quotes and uh, perfect it a little bit more and maybe put something like uh, a grunge overlay or something like that in the background. All right. So Rob has put in a suggestion and a call. So for those of you that are watching and that tune in all the time, uh, it's good to see you again, Fred. Nice to see you uh, joining us last week. So 
if you are watching this, I'm out of images to edit from, from subscriber images. I don't have very many left. So that's why the last couple of weeks I've been um, using my own images. We did HDR and light painting, merging and blending layers last week. And today I thought I would do something a little different again. Um, Catherine, your question about when to submit, literally I pull them that day. So if you can get them to me by Wednesday at noon, my time, which is about six hours prior to the event, um, I will be able to have them. So yeah, I pull them usually an hour or two before. Good question, Catherine. Thank you. And you could submit two per times you fill out the form. So if you want to send more than two, just do the form again. Thanks, Ecom. I will check those. Um, like I said, I didn't have very many for this week, so uh, I need at least six to eight uh, to work with for um, other people's images. So I will definitely pull yours for next week. Thank you very much. Sunflower Festival. That sounds exciting and colorful. I cannot wait to see that. Thanks, Holly. Perfect, Stephanie, thank you. I would love to see some of yours and Catherine's as well. Ron, send me some images. We wanna see, um, we wanna see, uh, let's see the pub where you got married, Ron, come on. Uh, do you guys want to see, uh, you wanna see what our wedding looked like? I'll see if I can find it real quickly. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I've got a collection. There's a collection of our wedding. Let me see what I've got. Oh, screen layout. And of course, my images are not in the place where they're supposed to be. So let's go down here. Oh, I bet they're not even in this catalog. There we go. All right. I'm working on it. I think I moved the folder, so I would have to go and find the folder again. Huh. Okay, here's a lesson for you. <laughs> so I've moved the folder, and I just need to figure out where it went because obviously I have lost track of this folder. Oh, there we go. It's just taking a while for it to load. So I think I deleted the thumbnails on this one. All right, here we go. We're getting close now. I have not marked anything, but let's see. There we go. Okay, so that's where we got married. In the middle of the sandbar, in the middle of the Squamish River, in our bare feet with a shaman and our family surrounding us. Our clothes were made in Thailand. We had them custom made. That's my sister as a bridesmaid and let's see if you can see oh my famous picture of my mother squatting <laughs> so my mother squatted to take a photo what she's taking a photo of is probably the photographers so we had um probably one of the most unique weddings that um people say they remember our wedding from years years later so we just celebrated our 12th anniversary. So there you go. All right, Ron. <laughs> so I am going to call it a quits for today. Um, I hope you got something out of that. And my idea for today is to inspire you to create something with your pictures. Okay. So I want you from this week to next week, for those of you that come every week, I want to hear if you create a project. So I want to hear some progress next week on your on your project let me hear what you're creating if you've got any ideas tell me in the chat now what are you inspired to create for next week right whether it be sunflower pictures for holly or ron's cat or uh, i'm not sure what else everybody is into but i'd love to know what you are inspired to create this week and for those of you that are in canada um enjoy enjoy is the wrong word um take some time to reflect tomorrow on reconciliation day make sure to wear your orange shirts and attend some events online if not in person to learn more about indigenous culture 
if that's something that you want to do. And even if you're not in the U.S., in Canada or the U.S., and you want to learn more about Indigenous culture, I am very drawn to it because of their connection to nature and values and uh, beliefs. If you want to know more, I'd be happy to share some videos for you that are on YouTube if you want to learn more. So um, that's it for this week. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. <laughs> 12. Yeah, we made it past past the uh, uh, past the Big Ten. Uh, Rob says plant medicine. Yes, plant medicine, indigenous plant medicine. Absolutely. And side chats are always welcome, Ron. We love side chats. It means that you're you're engaged and you're having a good time. You've got some images from past trips. Perfect. Okay. So pick one, Catherine. There's my challenge for you. Pick one and think about making a book, right? I've actually made photo books from um, some photo shoots that I did with my niece and my nephew when they were younger. And my, my goal also is to make one book from each trip that I've done, which is a big job because I've been to a lot of places. So that's my challenge for you is to pick one and work on a book whether it's blurb or something else. Calendars. Awesome. This is a perfect time for making a calendar. That's another good idea, Merle, because uh, the end of the year is coming. So you want to make the calendars now so that you have them available for 2022, right? Awesome. Great ideas, everyone. Thank you so much for attending and always being here and sharing your uh, thoughts and your humor and uh, be, bearing with me when I have technical difficulties like my internet melting down and so on. So thank you for joining as always. Take care and we'll see you next week.